On all fires, one of our strategic goals will be to put the fire out. I am Battalion Chief Doug Lee, B Shift Battalion 2. A safe, coordinated, and effective fire attack will achieve our incident priority of incident stabilization along with protecting life and property. All offensive attacks must be well calculated, appropriate for the level of risk we are operating in, and must be practiced to achieve a high level of proficiency. Like the old saying, as the first line goes, so does the fire. We have always known this, but in recent years it has been reinforced with the studies from UL, NIST, and the ATF. Often fire attacks are not as simple as pointing a 200-foot pre-connect to the front door. Kat and Tim Champlin will discuss these situations and some tactical options to consider. Hello, my name is Tim Champlin. I'm the captain here at Station 4 on Sea Shift. And as Chief Lee stated, we are faced with a variety of situations that require us to adjust tactically. Many of our buildings and occupancies within PFA require us to extend a hose line in order to reach the sea of the fire. Some examples are alley access, apartment complexes, interior stairwell supplies, or any situation where we have a great offset distance from the point of entry where we need to apply water. Extending a hose line can take additional time and be complex. However, with training and practice, this can become a smooth operation. In this video, we're going to give you a few options of what some crews have found to be effective. We'll start from when we arrive on scene. Depending on the situation, the need to an extend an attack line might be obvious. In other situations, this may not be determined until the 360 is complete. Engine forward on the scene of a large three-story apartment complex. We have visible signs on the Charlie side. This will be Heritage Command. Elva side will be the engine side. We'll be performing at 360. In this scenario, as the officer makes their way to the back side of the complex, they have a fire that is located on the Charlie side. And knowing that an extended attack line takes time to deploy, once the initial IC realizes the need for it, consider getting this assignment out to your crew before giving your 360 update. Engine 4 DO, come in. Go ahead for Engine 4 DO. We need a low rise to the Charlie Delta corner. Uh, you can just come through the breezeway. And also need a 100 foot pre connect to the third floor on the Charlie side. That's a copy, low rise through the breezeway to an inch and three quarter pre connect. Now that you have assigned this tactic to your crew, you can finish up your 360, if not complete, and then provide your 360 follow up report. Battalion 1 Command. Go ahead. 360 complete will be in the offensive strategy. We've got a working fire on the third floor, Charlie Delta. Sorry, one copy. 360 is complete. We have a working fire, third floor, Charlie Delta corner. We're in the offensive strategy. That's correct. After the 360, the initial IC can then make their additional assignments based off their tactical priorities for the call. Now let's go over a few options for your crew to practice to make this tactic successful. Let's look at the firefighter's responsibility first. In this option, the firefighter will pull the engine three-quarter line from the engine and lead the way to the fire. In this scenario, the officer only requested 100 feet due to the size of the apartment and available space for deployment. You will notice that the firefighter will reach up and break the load at 100 feet. He then positions it on his shoulder and makes his way to the building. Once the firefighter reaches the fire location, he deploys the line appropriate for the situation and feeds or positions the tail end of the hose to connect to the Y. This will serve as a drop point for the driver who will be bringing the supply line in later. Let's look at the driver's responsibilities. In this option, the driver will grab the three inch supply with the Y attached to the end of it. It is important for anyone pulling the supply line to have a good estimation of the overall distance needed as well as an understanding of a hundred foot distance in their mind. This will not only give them information of total hose needed, but also how far the amount of their shoulder load will get them 
and what point they need to begin to flake it off. Once they get to the last 100 feet of their distance to travel, they simply allow the hose to flake off their shoulder all the way to the wide drop point established by the firefighter where they drop the female end of the inch and three quarter attack line. The driver assures that the Y is shut and makes the connection and then returns to the engine to break the three inch supply line at the appropriate length and attach it to the discharge. Once connected, the driver charges the supply line. Now the officer or the firefighter can charge the attack line when they are ready. Now let's take a look at another option for extending hose lines. Here the firefighter will take all the equipment and the driver will support them in the process. When the firefighter gets back to the engine, they will pull the three inch supply line to the left shoulder. As they are doing this, the driver will disconnect the driver's side inch and three quarter attack line. Once it is disconnected, they will pull the entire load three quarters of the way out to allow the firefighter to get their right shoulder under the load and position it. It is important to allow yourself 30 to 50 feet away to allow room for the deployment of the inch and three quarter attack line. The firefighter will then push the inch and three quarter attack line off the right shoulder to the ground. When the firefighter is at the desired location, they drop the Y. Here they will take the female end of the attack line and attach it. The firefighter will then quickly flake out the 100 foot of flat load and then pick up the Minuteman and place it back onto the right shoulder. Crews have found that this is very manageable on flat or downhill terrain up to 300 feet. Depending on the situation and the proximity of the entry point to the Y connection, it may vary who will make the connection to the Y and charge the hose line. It could be the firefighter or the officer. The benefit of this approach is that it keeps the driver close to the engine to break the supply line, attach it to the discharge, and get water to the Y fast. Water! The officer can then charge the line and meet up with the firefighter and prepare for interior or exterior operations. Like most things we do, Usually there's more than one right way to get the job done. Hopefully we've presented you with some new ideas that you can go out and practice with your crews. But more importantly, to stimulate the thought process and generate discussions which may lead you to discover new and creative ways to make this tactic even more efficient. I would encourage you to train in and around buildings that are located within your response area. Buildings that you'll be responding to if there is a fire. And I would also urge you to time these evolutions for several reasons. So you'll have a benchmark of how long one method takes over another as an indicator of improvement and as a gauge of effectiveness. As a tactical officer, you need to have a pretty good idea how long it's gonna to take to get the line in service and to get water on the fire. Now, as we all know, fire grows exponentially and conditions can change drastically in a short amount of time. So it's imperative that we use the most effective prompt method regardless of terrain, weather, or other fire ground conditions. So train hard, have fun, and don't forget to share what you've learned with the other crews.